Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ, and today I'm gonna to talk about one of the hardest things to do, but one of the most well-known phrases when investing in the stock market, and that's buy low, sell high. Now, whether you're a current investor, or even if you're not an investor, you've probably heard the term or the phrase, buy low, sell high. Now, whenever you're trying to make profit, whether it's with a business, or whether it's with the stock market or real estate, everyone knows that in order for you to profit, you need to have a buy point of whatever you're buying that's lower than the actual sell point where you sell the product or you sell the asset. And while it's an easy concept, this is a lot harder to do in real life for a lot of people. And I'm gonna talk about why it's so hard in this video. And so if you've ever been a part of the market or watched the market, whenever there's a big market crash, a reason why that there's a significant drop in a very short amount of time is that people panic sell but you're supposed to buy low and sell high, right? You would think that when the stock market is going down, that there would be more people that are buying because there are lower prices for those assets. But one of the main reasons that there's such a quick change in the market, whenever there's, whether it's a pandemic or there's a financial crisis or whatever the reason is that the stock market is going down is that humans hate to lose. Not only that, but losses have a greater toll on your emotions than actual gains do. In fact, research has shown that the strength of emotion from a loss is two times greater than that of a gain. So that means if you were to lose $1,000, it would feel the same emotionally as winning $2,000. But you would think that you would be twice as happy if you won $2,000 versus if you lost $1,000, but that's not the case. And so I'll use a non-investing example to compare. So when you think about when a baby is born, that is a positive thing. Something is being brought into the world. It is something new. And you would think, and you know that people are actually happy when babies are born. The sadness of actually losing someone is a lot stronger than the happiness that we feel when a baby is born. And not only that, but depending on the age of the person who has passed away, if they're older, it doesn't hurt as much as it would for someone that's younger. And part of that is based on expectation. When we are young, we of course expect that there are many, many years that we're gonna take part in the world. And so whether it's a friend or a family member, you don't expect someone at the age of, whether it's a teenager, whether it's someone that's 20, versus someone that's in their 70s or 80s, you know that at some point in the near term that they're probably gonna pass away. And so the loss that you may feel would be different based on the age. And so while there's not a direct correlation, I'd like to use that as an example to show how you would feel when you're losing money or your, the value of the stock or the value of a property is going down. Because if you just invested into a stock yesterday and you were to lose $1,000, you would feel a lot worse than if 10 years from now, that same stock were to lose $1,000. And the reason is because you had a certain expectation that as soon as you put your money in, you're not expecting for the stock market to go down and for you to lose $1,000 or for not even just the stock market as a whole, but maybe that one specific company goes down while many other stocks that you could have chosen have gone up. And so you feel that hurt of, man, I chose the wrong thing, I invested in the wrong thing, I don't wanna deal with the stock market anymore because I don't wanna lose my money. But if that one stock were to go up very quickly in a short time, it would have to go up twice as much. It would have to go up $2,000 compared to you losing $1,000 in order for you to feel that same excitement or the level of emotion that you would feel when it goes up versus when it goes down. But also when it's going up, you still have that expectation that it could go higher. So it's very unlikely that you're going to sell even though you are up a significant amount because you expect that it's gonna continue on that same path. And that's why it's a lot harder for you to sell when it's high because you still expect it to go higher. No matter what's going on, unless there's something significant going on with the economy, more than likely you're gonna hold on to that stock and you may even lose out on some of those gains because you expect it to go higher in the future. But if something were to go down really quickly, you're gonna probably sell it a lot quicker than you would if you're deciding to sell something that's actually appreciated and value and over the short term. And so when there are big drops in the market, seasoned investors are thinking about creating their, basically their buy list. If they don't already have their buy list together, they're definitely getting it together now. Because if you think about it, when a stock goes down, you're getting it at a discount. So don't think of it as a loss because you haven't actually lost anything until you actually sell your asset. 
because the value of that asset could go up the next day, it could go down the next day. You don't know what's gonna happen. And so unless there's some significant news to where you think the future value of that company is going to go down or it's gonna stay down for a significant amount of time, then it's better for you to buy more while it's low. And then that way, once it goes back up, you actually have more shares, you have more money invested because you were able to buy at a discount. And that's where the famous quote for Warren Buffett comes as well. When others are fearful, be greedy. And when others are greedy, be fearful. What that essentially means is that when people are fearful about what's gonna happen for the market in the future, more than likely the stock market has dropped significantly. And this is the time that you should be greedy and buy up as much as you can. Based on however much cash you can afford to put in the stock market, you should start to buy up as much as you can at that point. Because when people are fearful about what's gonna happen for the future, people have sold off stock, the stock market has gone down, that means you have the chance to get these stocks at a discount. But when people are greedy, when people are buying, no matter what the cost of the stock is, as you may have seen in August and September of this year, where the stock market was going up significantly higher in a short amount of time, then that may have been a time point where you could actually sell and make a profit on some of those gains where you had companies that have gone up 100 and even 200% over a short time period. And at the end of the month, you saw that many, especially with the tech stocks, they actually went down in price because they had risen so quickly over a short amount of time. So if you believe that based on the current price point of an individual stock or on how the total stock market is doing, if you believe that what you buy today will be worth more five years from now, then you should definitely buy whatever stock or whatever index fund that you're deciding to invest in. Now, one way for you to not even have to think about what to buy on a day-to-day -day basis and on whether today is a great day to buy or not, if you're investing for the long term and you have many years to go before you need to use any of the money that you have invested in the stock market, a great way to go is to invest in a total stock market or an S&P 500 index fund and to do it on a regular basis by dollar cost averaging, buying on a weekly, a bi-weekly or a monthly basis. And when you do this, when the stock market is at its high, you're buying less shares of stock at a higher price. But if the stock market were to go down, you're gonna buy the stocks at a lower price and you're actually gonna be able to buy more shares with the same amount of money. So for instance, if you're buying fractional shares of a company that's $1,000 per share and you're putting $100 per month, that means you're buying one tenth of a share every month if that stock is around a $1,000 mark. Now, if that stock were to get cut in half and drop 50%, but you know or you believe that in the future that stock will continue to appreciate over the long term, that means you can get it at a 50% discount. So every $100 that you're putting into that stock is now 20% of that stock or one fifth. So now you're able to buy two times the amount of shares at the $500 price point than you were at the $1,000 price point. And so investing in index funds is a great way not only to match the market performance, but also to beat a lot of the professional investors out there because 80 to 90% of professionals aren't able to beat a stock market index fund or S&P 500 index fund over the long term. And so when investing with index funds is not as exciting or maybe fulfilling if you're a person that wants to see a 200% gain in one year, because that is possible with an individual stock, but more than likely, the stock market will not increase by 200% as a whole within a given year. However, what you also won't deal with are 90% drops and 80% drops on a regular basis when you're investing in the total stock market. There's only been one time in the history of the stock market in the United States where the stock market has dropped by 90% and that was during the Great Depression. Now there have been several 20 and 30% drops over the course of the last 100 years and those were significant drops. However, when you're dealing with individual stocks, an individual company can go bankrupt where you're losing 100%, it could drop 50%, 60%, 80% in a given day or a week or a year, but it could also go up 50, 60, 80% or even 100% 
over a day, like if a company was acquired, it could go up that much. Or if there was some significant news about a specific company, you could have something like that happen. But if you don't wanna deal with the volatility, you don't wanna to have to do the research to learn more about those individual stocks, you can invest in index funds and you're still gonna do better than the majority of those professional traders or the fake professional individual traders who think they know what they're talking about on a daily basis and try to convince you to invest in individual stocks based on their performance that they're sharing. And in most cases, when people are sharing that they made 100% or 200% on a specific stock, they're not gonna tell you about their failures as well when they lost 50 and 60 and 70 and 90% on an individual stock, or they invested in a company that ended up going bankrupt. So the best thing to do is to do what's right for your level of knowledge and for the amount of research that you're willing to do in an individual company. So if you're willing to do the research or you feel like you know a specific company or a specific sector, and then you can invest in that company with confidence, then go right ahead and do it. But for most people, the best way to invest is to invest either in a total stock market index fund or an S&P 500 index fund where you're getting the average market return, which is still beating 80 to 90% of the professionals or the individual investors who are trying to convince you to invest in individual stocks and usually they're trying to convince you because they're probably trying to sell you something and as I mentioned over the course of the last 100 years there's only been one 90% drop in the stock market although there have been several 20 and 30% drops over the course of a year and actually those happen every about seven to ten years and they're called bear market and that is just a part of the economy as a whole over time there are going to be dips in the market there are going to be time periods where the market doesn't do as well as it did over the past five or six or seven years however if you ever look at a chart of the stock market over the past 20 30 50 or even over a full 100 year period you can see that the overall movement of the market is always positive and while people may panic during those time periods where it drops 5, 10, 20, or maybe even 30%, those are the best times to get invested in the stock market because you know that over the next five to seven or even 10 years, that the market is gonna perform a lot better than it did in that past year. While the saying the market always goes up is only partially true because there are always ups and downs every year or even on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week basis, we know that eventually, as long as financial markets exist and humans exist, the stock market will always go up and to the right. But if you go down and to the right, you can hit that subscribe button. You'll be able to get more videos just like this where I talk about the basics of investing and I do reviews of investment apps and cashback apps and things of that nature. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down and to the right. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it. If you're not a current subscriber of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.